Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Um, my channel is an awareness raising channel for people who want to be in the know. I give my opinion, I don't state facts. So anything I talk about, please check it out for yourself. If you like what I talk about, um, just click up the thumbs up button. Or if you don't like it, put the thumbs down button. And if you want to subscribe, please do. Um, I tend to do, um, on average, about three, two to three videos a day. So if you don't want to be inundated, you know, you don't have to subscribe. But, you know, just, um, you can also always put the occasional because I think they have one for occasional or you can put your um, request in there. Anyway, this um, video today is for those who overstayers and it's for, it's really, I took it from Free Movement the inspiration is from there and I'm actually going to read it from there because you need to know the experiences. This is going to be quite a long video, but basically it just shows how people can overstay through no fault of their own. <coughs> Some people seem to think that everybody's an overstayer. It's somebody who's living surreptitiously. They come here deliberately. They overstay. They're convicts. They're criminals. And that's how they're treated. But you will see from the examples I give based on case case um, studies that people, some people just simply forget one person was just two days um, over the limit. And yes, while you've got 14 days, it just changed her whole application and ended up costing her so much more money because she had to take a, a different route because she missed her, um, her, she overstayed by two days. So, you know, for people who love pointing fingers at, you know, the overstayers, and when you think about um, Operation Nexus and the police and the Home Office and the Immigration Service all, you know, shouting down and making people who overstay look like criminals, this will give you a good idea about the examples of why um, people have overstayed. And hopefully it will help some of you to empathise. Some of you might say, oh, serves them right, they should have checked. Uh, there's going to be a lot of do-gooders out there. There's going to be a lot of self-righteous people out there. There are going to be those people who say, oh, well, they should have put it in their diary. They should have put it in their calendar. But when you're dealing with five years ahead, when you have to remind yourself five years ahead, it's not that easy. Because, you know, unless you are kind of have one of those calendars that pop up, you know, and you can put it five years ahead. It's not that easy to remember. Anyway, um, I'm going to read this from um, Free Movement. And like I said, I'll put the link in below. And um, yeah, it is going to be quite long. So it's a Friday evening. If you're watching it tonight, get a glass of, get a glass of water, a glass of wine, a cup of tea, a cup of coffee. Make yourself comfortable. And let me begin. Okay, so if you've been, a, if you have allowed your ex, your visa to expire, short of being in a serious accident, and have been hospitalised for the fourteen day duration allowed, and can prove it, you will not be allowed to renew your visa. You will have to leave the country immediately with no prospect or guarantee of return. Plus, it will be at your expense with all the stress that goes with it. It is no wonder why people take the risk and overstay. This is my bit. Hopefully, saving for when and if they get caught and are subsequently booted out. I can't stress enough if you're an overstayer. Make sure you've saved money in the country you're heading for send it over make sure it's safe don't give it to anybody deposit it in a bank many overstayers are prepared to take the risk the downside is the detention center if you get caught disgrace and stigma associated with it humiliation cruelty and abuse in the detention center you've got no choice when you want to go back to your country or to be with your family and you're detained indefinitely. And on top of that, they, they handcuff you and, and put all kind of chains on you when they're putting you on that plane. Free Movement shares Bob's case study. Bob is a high-flying, 
publishing executive. He was a sponsored employee on a tier two work visa and had lived in the UK continuously for five years, making him eligible for indefinite leave to remain. Bob had just passed the life in the UK test and was all geared up and ready to go with his application for indefinite leave to remain. As he was completing the form and inputting his biometric and card details, he noticed with horror that his visa had actually expired over 30 days ago. He thought it was due to expire imminently, but it turned out he got the month wrong. He thought maybe his employer or the Home Office would have reminded him that it was expiring. His employer thought that he would have been monitoring this himself. The Home Office does not issue reminders. Bob had therefore been an overstayer for over a month. On discovery of this fact, he became a known knowing overstayer, which is meant that he was committing an ongoing criminal offence. He was unable to make a valid application for a Tier 2 ILR because of paragraph 24SHF, sorry, 245HF in brackets J of the immigration rules, which says, the applicant must not be in the UK in breach of immigration laws except that where paragraph 39E of these rules apply. Any current period of overstay will be disregarded. Bob was in breach of the immigration laws and more th for more than 14 days past the expiry of his leave. Nothing in paragraph 39E applied. Like so many others, Bob made an honest mistake. He was possibly working too hard and due to one silly forgetful moment, the last five years of his life, building up to his indefinite leave to remain application might as well count for nothing. Bob had no choice but to leave as he was unable to apply for any visa from within the UK due to his status as an overstayer. Bob rushed home to pack his bags and arrange a flight back to his home country, waving goodbye to his ILR at the airport. Even coming back was difficult. He was unable to apply for most types of entry clearances because of having overstayed by more than 30 days. Even if this re-entry ban had applied, he could not apply for a fresh Tier 2 visa from abroad as that requires a mandatory 12-month cooling-off period. He was not lucky enough to be earning a high enough salary for that cooling-off period to be waived. Bob was in a relationship with a British citizen. They had high hopes of Bob getting his indefinite leave to remain, then his citizenship within a year. Thankfully, they had cohabited for at least two years together, and Bob was able to return to the home country, work remotely during this time and apply for a priority partner visa. Bob is now back in the UK with a partner visa, but his clock for ILR has re been reset to zero. And so he will not be eligible for ILR for another five years and citizenship for one year after that. So obviously his cohabitation agreement was all documented. You know, in one of my other videos, it says that you've got to have your name on the tenancy agreement or mortgage applications, um, utility bills, council tax bills for the duration of the period that you're partnering with somebody. That's the only way you can prove that you are in a genuine relationship with someone. And that is probably what happened with Bob, why he was given his... Um, indefinitely well not an indefinitely to remain because he's got to start all over again not everyone has the financial backing of a major publishing house like bob so obviously his employer was instrumental in his success and not everyone has a british partner able to sponsor their return without those bob would never have made it back to the uk so his spouse sponsored him Bob's error will cost him at minimum about £7,150 in additional visa application fees. This does not take into account priority processing charges, legal fees, 
urgent flight and accommodation costs while waiting abroad for a visa. So you see, people that overstay, a lot of them, it's not deliberate. They have genuinely missed the deadline. And now, since it's more than 14 days, it used to be 28. But once, the, once it's past that, what are they are going to think? Oh, I've got to leave now? Agnes, this is another case study. Agnes is a lady in her 70s. She has a child in the UK and is a loving grandmother to several British grandchildren also in the UK. Just over five years ago, Agnes decided to relocate to the UK to be closer to her family. She had a grandparent born in the UK and was eligible for a UK ancestry visa. She got her visa, sold her house, packed her belongings and moved close to her family. An ancestry visa is valid for five years. Five years after she arrived in the UK, Agnes's very elderly mother took sick abroad. Agnes naturally did not have her mind on her visa. When Agnes visited her local citizens advice centre to ask for assistance on which form to use for her ILR application, the advisor noticed that her visa had expired just under a month previously. As with Bob, Agnes became a knowing overstayer and was thus committing a criminal offence. Paragraph 192 of the Immigration Rules states, indefinite leave to remain may be granted on application to a Commonwealth citizen with the United Kingdom born grandparent provided the applicant is not in the UK in breach of immigration laws except that where paragraph 39E of these rules applies. Any current period of overstaying will be disregarded. Agnes, as an overstayer, was in breach of the immigration laws and more than 14 days beyond the expiry of her leave. There was nothing in paragraph 39E that applied to exempt her. She was therefore unable to make a valid ancestry indefinite leave to remain application. Maybe that deadline ought to have been etched in her brain and on her calendar, but with the passage of time over five years and with other competing factors in her life, she simply forgot. This lady gave up her life in her home country to permanently move to her ancestral home to settle close to her child and grandchildren. But because she missed a date by a few weeks, the immigration rules do not allow her to make a valid application. The legally correct move for her would have been to immediately depart from the UK and if wishing to return, apply for entry clearances again from abroad. Doing so would be extremely disruptive. Remember that Agnes had sold her home from abroad and would have run the risk of entry clearance being refused. And even if successful, she would have been back to the start of that five year road to indefinite leave to remain. Furthermore, unless she was able to book flights out within 30 days of her visa expiring, she faced the risk of a re-entry ban. In the end, the life disruption that a departure from the UK would cause, she just made a fresh application to come back to the UK and wait for an indeterminate period for a decision. It was simply too much to countenance. We decided to apply, the we being free movement, for an indefinite leave to remain anyway, seeking a discretionary grant outside of the rules based on a number of compelling factors which we are still awaiting. So this free movement is really, is really quite a good uh, organisation. I'll put the link down below anyway. Matilda, this is another case study. Matilda was living here on a visa granted to her as a parent of a British citizen child in the UK. Matilda had already completed two and a half years of residence in the UK and was ready to apply for an extension. After five years, she would be eligible for indefinite leave to remain like Bob and Agnes. Matilda thought her visa expired one month later than it actually did.
She noticed this two days after expiry. She urgently submitted her extension application and tried to give a good reason for the delay in line with the potential exemption for overstaying of less than 14 days in paragraph 39E of the immigration rules. This applies where the application was made within 14 days of the, applica the applicant's leave expiring and the Secretary of State considers that there was a good reason beyond the control of the applicant of or their representative provided in or with the application why the application could not be made in time. I don't know if um, forgetting is what they consider a compelling or good enough reason. Ultimately, though, Matilda admitted to the Home Office that the mistake was her own fault. She simply forgot. The Home Office refused her extension application. It did grant her a different category of leave on human rights grounds, as it is empowered to do, but this placed her on a new 10-year route to indefinite leave to remain taking her off the shorter course that she was on. Unlike Bob or Agnes, Matilda had at least got her Matilda at least got a visa, even if it wasn't the visa she asked for, and didn't have to disrupt her life. Being shunted off on a five year route to indefinitely to remain on a ten year route starting afresh at year zero due to the break in continuity of lawful residence caused by two days of overstaying, means that she will have to make three more extension applications, then an indefinite leave to remain application over the course of the next 10 years. At today's prices, this will cost her £2,052.20 per extension application inclusive of biometric enrolment fee and immigration health charge surcharge fee. So an additional £6,156.60. Then her indefinite leave to remain application will cost her again at today's rates a further £2,408.20. Just because she forgot and these other people forgot to renew their visa in time. Anybody out there, you better be checking your visa continuously. And if you know it's going to expire in a particular year, you make sure you put it everywhere in your house and check it every single month to see when it is due to expire. This isn't something you can mess with. This makes your life hell. And there's no return. There's no going back. There's no forgiveness. There's no compassion. There's no empathy. The Home Office don't give a toss. It's not human beings you're dealing with. You're dealing with machines. You're dealing with algorithms. You're dealing with systems that haven't got a soul and don't have a conscience. Bear that in mind when you're thinking about your visa renewal. Ironically now that Matilda has valid leave to remain again, she could make another visa application immediately to try and switch back onto the five-year route to indefinite leave to remain. She meets all the requirements, but this will cost her another £2,052.20 and place her at year zero again on that five-year route to indefinite leave to remain. All this for two days of technically unlawful residence as an overstayer. <coughs> it is worth thinking about Matilda's case the next time you hear about some inflated figures for the number of illegal immigrants in the country. And illegal immigrants is put in quotes. The expert consensus, consensus is that most people without permission to be in the UK have simply overstayed rather than entered illegally. You know, there is a different, two different connotations. People who enter illegally, like those who um, come on the boats or those who come in by cars, you know, on trucks and lorries. There is a difference. 
those people are deliberately trying to get into the country illegally and claim asylum for whatever reason. But when you have people who have overstayed or who or who have because of their visa or just simply because they've forgotten, can understand they're not looking at it if it's six months to a year. But when it's just a couple of days or a month even, it used to be 28 days, they used to give you a 28 day um, waiver. But not anymore, they've cut it down to 14 days to make it more difficult. So you have to be on the ball. You can't afford to let your mind lapse for one minute when it comes to something that is so important. I think this is the last one, Christina. Christina lived in the UK with her British husband for five years. She held a valid spouse visa throughout the time. Christina was on the ball and well aware of her visa was expiring. She knew that she had to make an application before the expir expiration date. She also knew that if the application was undecided by the date of expiry, her lawful residence would continue automatically until a decision was made under Section 3C of the Immigration Act 1971. Christina dutifully filled in an online form and handed over a fee of £1,349.20. This fee rang alarm bells to the immigration lawyers. That is how much an application for naturalisation as a British citizen would cost, not an application for indefinite leave to remain, which is £2,389 plus £19.20 for the biometric enrolment. Christina had applied for citizenship instead of settlement. Why? She just got confused with the form and thought that she was and thought that this was what she ought to be applying for. And this is not uncommon. What happens if you mistakenly apply for British citizenship instead of indefinite leave to remain? Christina's citizenship application was refused. By that time, her visa had expired. The Home Office refusal letter glibly informed Christine of this distressing fact. Thankfully, the refusal arrived just shy of 14 days from the expiry of leave. All this came as a considerable shock. Little did she know that Section 3C does not extend leave where a person makes a citizenship application instead of an application for further leave to remain. So what they're saying is there's no room for errors. You make a mistake and it's within and you happen by the time you've made a mistake, they find out that your visa has expired. Tough. That's what they're saying. They're not looking at it and saying, OK, she made this application within the 14 day period. I mean, before her visa was due to expire, they're not looking at it from that standpoint. And they're not saying, OK, because she submitted it within the time frame and she's made a mistake, let us backdate this new application to when she actually submitted the wrong application. Because she's already paid £1,389, which should technically be a deposit towards her indefinite leave to remain. Oh, no, that would be too sympathetic. That would be too... So what they do, she loses her 1389 she doesn't get her visa application. And they and, and they don't even extend, they don't even let it, and you know, to be honest, when they're doing those applications, they're the ones that delay it. So even if she paid it in time, by the time they've looked at it, they probably look at it, but they've got about a day or two left. And so when they send it out, she's already past the expiry date. Christina is now in the UK unlawfully. As with Agnes, the legal correct thing to do would be for Christina to depart from the UK and to apply for res fresh entry clearance from abroad. She will need somewhere to live in her home country to separate from her husband for an indeterminate period of time, to risk refusal due to having previously overstayed, to pay a lot of money in fees and to start back on year zero.
of her five-year plan to indefinite leave to remain. To make a valid spouse indefinite leave to remain application, paragraph E, ILRP.1.2 of Appendix FM states, the applicant must be in the UK with a valid leave to remain as a partner under this appendix, except that where paragraph 39E of these rules applies, any current period of overstaying will be disregarded. In Christina's case, had she made literally any other type of immigration application seeking leave to remain instead of citizenship, no matter how absurd, irrelevant or doomed to fail a category she were to choose, paragraph 39E would have allowed her to make a fresh application within the 14 days of refusal. No questions asked and crucially, without the need to show good reason beyond her control. Because a citizenship application is not an application for leave to remain, however, it does not generate 3C leave and does not fall within the ambit of paragraph 39E. We at Free Movement have decided to try an indefinite leave to remain application anyway within 14 days of expiry of leave and refusal of citizenship application, pleading good reason and failing that, seeking discretion. We will await a decision. So I shared those with you because I think it's really important to see how important it is to remember your visa due date. And the thing is, some of those you can see they are really genuine errors. Anyway, I've gone long enough with this video. I hope you find it useful. Please like, share and subscribe. Bye bye.